Welcome back. So, the last time we had lesson two, part three, which was more calculations. Lesson two, part two was calculations. So, naturally, lesson two, part four is even more bloody calculations. So, all of these variations on a theme are based around getting used to the circular slide rule and the calculations involved in it. Now, one of the things that we do need to do, and it's listed out in the exams, is that you need to be able to compute fuel burn rates given the consumption and time. So all we do here is just like we've done on, on everything else, you position the amount burned on the outer scale above the time on the inner scale and the fuel burn rate is above the 60 on the inner scale because everything on the inner scale is always to do with time. So, if you burnt 40 litres in 109 minutes, what is your aircraft's burn rate? Now, time again. Variation on the thing. Fuel consumption on the outside, time consumed on the inside, and above your little 60 will give you the burn rate. So, in this example, if you burned 40 litres in 109 minutes, fuel consumption is fuel consumed, time consumed is still the same, and in the same position. So, 40 on the outer scale, 109 on the inner, and then go over to your little 60 triangle, <coughs> and it will give you the fuel burnt. So, let's try these examples here. If you've been flying for 120 minutes and you've used 100 litres of fuel, you don't really need a slide rule for this, what have you consumed? So, 100 litres, put that on the outside, and then find 120, or 12 on the inside, line those two up, and read above the 60, and you should see 50. And you can check that in a logical form. Because if you've been flying for 120 minutes and you've used 100 litres, then your consumption is 50. So you have a go at the next one. You've been flying for 84 minutes and you've consumed 49 litres. So fuel consumption, 49 on the outside. Marry that up with 84 on the inside, which is your minutes in flight time. And you should get 35. That's it. It's just like we were doing in the last lesson. Not that hard. Another prerequisite to be tested on is the ability to compute fuel endurance, given the fuel quantity and the burn rate. And again, fuel quantity, as a quantity, always goes on the outside. Endurance, being time, goes on the inside. Care must be taken when reading the exam questions involving calculating endurance and understand what you're being asked. Because there is a legal minimum amount of fuel you must have left in your aircraft after flight, which is discussed in detail in the air log exam, which we'll be covering next. But in its simplest form, a further 30 minutes of flight time during the day and a further 45 minutes at night. So understand from the question if you're being asked to calculate the endurance including or not the legal and really badly spelt legal reserve. As this will affect your answer. In the example below we will assume, and you'll see this in, in, in the test questions, we will assume all fuel is included to calculate the fuel endurance. So, burning 22 litres per hour with 70 litres on board, what is your fuel endurance? 191 minutes. Now you could get 190, you can get 192. You're allowed, I think, two either way um, to cover you because 
the E6B is not uh, the most accurate of kit and they allow for that, so don't worry too much. But what they may ask you is you need to be able to convert that into hours and minutes. Three hours and eleven minutes. So make sure you can do those conversions as well. I know there is one or two, a uh, few people that I've spoken to who sent the exam had been asked to do that. So conversions, and you have got to keep going over this, you need to be able to convert and you will get many, many questions or you will get conversions as part of the question. So with all conversions it's important to have a general idea of what and how to convert between one unit and another. Converting kilograms to pounds, degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, nautical to statute to kilometers. Now if you have a look around on the outside and the inside of your spin wheel you can see that all of these things are, are identified. You can see that it has uh, usually just either side of the 70 on the outer scale. You'll see nautical miles to statute miles. Again nice and easy. And then you just line up the stat with the nought and, and you can run. Just get to know what is on your circular slide rule, because it's you, you'll you'll hit it every time. Um, and one of the most favourite questions, um, and it just comes out as a single line. What is one nautical mile in statute miles? So keep an eye out for that. Um, but again, you'll have your spin wheel. You can work it out. But you should know it anyway. So to do Fahrenheit to Celsius you can deduct 32 multiply by 5 and divide by 9 but also you can use your slide rule because it has that entire scale on the bottom of the E6B. Uh, there is yeah so there is a temperature conversion chart on the bottom of the slide rule. Have a quick look now so if you've got the ASA um, that has it at the bottom of the outer ring marker um, uh, and others have it uh, in the same way that the nautical and statute miles are. There's, there's just uh, two pointers and you just line those through. But keep an eye out for these because they're very very common and you have to be able to do this. So feet and meters you can see that there is you line up the arrows between feet and meters and then find if you want meters to feet find your 50 and you'll get 16.5 um, or if you're going from feet to meters on the outer scale to the inner it's it really isn't rocket science but get used to using this um, because you will see these especially the liters to gallons um, because the gallons can be US or imperial gallons so keep an eye out for those little quirky questions that do come up so with all conversions it's important to have a general idea of what and how to convert between one unit and another. All right? Keep that in mind. They can, they can accumulate up to sort of four or five questions in your exam. So we're going to be doing um, wing components next, uh, which is again good fun. Um, most of you will have a, uh, a wing component matrix like this one that you see in front of you actually on your E6B have a look at it um, it is very easy and quick for conversions and that's just getting your crosswind and your headwind calculations um, most importantly we'll be doing the 1 in 60 rule um, we'll be doing the, uh, the uh, triangle of velocities so keep tuned but keep practicing these things because they will kill you um, and it can be the difference between a pass and a fail. So know where those calculations are and know how you line those up. Um, and, and get familiar with your E6B because you can have fuel pounds, you can have oil pounds. If you get those two mixed up, you're going to get the wrong answer and you just need to be aware of that. Okay, so don't forget, like, subscribe, tell other people. Um, and, and, and share this because 
a, a good pilot never ever stops learning, but we learn from others as well.